there guys, welcome back to the worst war machine channel on the internet. I'm Malorian, this is Malorian Weekly, and what we're going to be talking about today is Privateer Press and if they need to go digital. Now, what I'm really talking about this is that we're moving on to a new world and a new way of doing things, and I keep on wondering if Privateer Press needs to jump to that next step. So. Let's try and look at some other areas to see what they're doing so we can relate this back to War Machine. So let's talk about Magic the Gathering. Magic the Gathering, one of my other hobbies, hooray nerdy cards. And you know, you got your paper cardboard that you play with and that's all great and things. But one of the things that they did is they moved on and they made online platforms. And they have a new one that's really taking off, which is Magic Arena. So this is one where you can go on there and you can play and it's fantastic. Well, okay, well that's all well and good, but Malorian, we're talking about little pieces of cardboard. We're not talking about a tabletop war game. How are you saying that we should be applying that to this tabletop war game? And I think the very first thing that we have to say when we're going to be having this conversation is that I fully realize that if we take this hobby that is, you know, building, painting, playing, you know, not just building the model, but building the list, parts of the hobbies that you like, this is a, a big thing that's not just like, oh, it's just like the actual game. This is a hobby that's larger than itself. Even the people that are making terrain and things like that, you know, like, Right away, when I talk about things about going digital with Privateer Press, it's like, well, no, I don't want, that's not my game, that's not what I'm into. Well, I think one of the things you have to start thinking about is the idea that it is what a lot of you are into and what a lot more of you are getting into. So I think a very great example for this is, let's just start off with War Room. So War Room is something where before that, we had cards. We all use cards. We liked having the cards in front of us. And then all of a sudden they decided to make that next jump. And we're going to make this thing digital so that you can just do it on your phone. You can be making these lists wherever you want. You know, you can be saving these lists. It's not like before every game you got to shuffle up your cards and, well, not shuffle them. That'd be really awful. But, you know, remix your cards to get the ones you need. You know, it's, it's just there on your phone and it's so convenient. And you want to look up rules, it's all right there. And so, whereas in the beginning, you quite a few people are like well you know like it's kind of nice to look for rules on the outside but during a tournament you know you don't want to run out of power I want to be having these and I, I like having them in my hands and I like seeing the damages right there in front of me more and more it's just become a regular thing everybody uses war room you know there's a few people that are still using cards but they are definitely in, in the vast minority right now and so that was the first kind of step and that's great well, let's also look at something like War Table. War Table and Vassal are a way of playing War Machine online. Kind of. Because it is really just circles going around. You can put some pictures in and some different art, but it's really not the same whatsoever. So if we look at that, when it first came out, it's like, okay, some people would do it if they really had to, you know, if I want to be playing it, someone that's way over in a different country, well, Vassal's the only option. Now that we're coming here to the pandemic, if I want to be playing War Machine and my stores are closed or whatever, well, War Table would be the way that I have to go. Now, that being said, you know, there's all the people, including myself, that said all the bad things about War Table. It's so slow, it's so awkward, there's so many workarounds, it doesn't look great, you know, but still, as time goes on, much like War Room, more and more people are playing it, and the more you play with it, the more you get used to it. The more you get used to it, the more it's not like, well, this is not a four-hour thing anymore, this is fast, this is easy, this is no problem. So. It's really showing that, if nothing else, when we first think about, like, oh, we can't do that, that's impossible, we'll just use a little bit, and things are possible. Now, Malorian, what are you actually saying here? You, we're already doing War Table. We're already doing things online. So, what's even the point of this video? Well, I think that we need to take the next step and go even further. And what I mean by that is things like, we should be making it, and by we, really more so Private Chair Press, making it so that this is a fully integrated online version 
of War Machine, which is not just circles moving around. That was the biggest thing, again, going back to Magic the Gathering, that when they went on with this Magic Arena, it had to be spot on. And it had to be something where, like, yeah, all the rules are fully captured. You can come into this knowing nothing. And it'll be tutorials. It'll teach you the game. Everything's giving you the triggers as you go along. And it's beautiful. It's not like this ugly, like, oh, here's this is the card. It's going to say the rules. And I'll, I'll, I'll do the thing. No, it is tons of art in there. Animations. It's wonderful. And it's so much so that... It seems to be really taking over. I don't know what that the ratio is right now, but it's probably getting closer and closer to where like half your players are really arena players where they spend most of their time. And it's not even just with that. It's also for tournaments, right? Wizards of the Coast that makes Magic the Gathering have really incorporated Magic Arena into their tournament structure such that when they're trying to build up with their big cast prizes, they're also coming from Magic Arena because they realize, look, this is really the same thing and we can be getting people playing this same way. Now, again, what does that mean for War Machine? How can we do this with War Machine? Well, right now we're looking at little circles and little circles moving around and there's a dice thing on there and that's great, but you could do this a lot better as in way better. If we try and think of things where, I mean, hopefully a lot of you know about battle chess. We have these pieces on there. You tell you, When you select one, it tells you where it can move. You can move there. And if you're killing another piece, well, there's an animation about how it kills it. Well, why can't we do that with War Machine? Why can't we have this 3D environment that I can actually like move around, zoom in, zoom out, and when it's my turn, I can click on a model and the rules are right there. A basically footprint of where I can be moving it is available to me. If I want to be moving into an area where I can be attacking this model, that's shown, right? Basically, I can go up there and say and click on a button like make your initial attack against this model and it'll just do it for me because all the rules are in there. There can be an animation in that and that would be so beautiful and so great. And I mean, that's just the visual pieces to get around like the circles and stuff like that being like setting up for a game. With things like Magic Arena, I can go in there, go into a lobby, get a game right away. And even though we can say we can do things like that with like a Discord now, that can be automated so much more. Where I just go in there, boom, matches me up against somebody else, and off we go. We're off to a race as we're playing a game type thing. And I guess the biggest thing that maybe I'm hoping that people are thinking now is just like, wow, like this is that would be awesome. That would be great. That'd be fantastic. Um, but how would Privateer Press make money off of this? Well, let's, let's wait. I want you to save that in your mind, push it aside. We're going to capture that at the end. I still want to come back because I'm still sure that there's another group of people being like, ah, I don't want to move to that. I, I like to build these models. I like to paint the models. And I, I, that might be very true for you. But we also have to think, what is the future of this game? And what do future generations actually want? And if you're looking at what people are playing, you know, it's not, you're not seeing things like this really coming up to the forefront that, oh yeah, you know, those youngins always want to get into things that are really difficult and really taxing on their time. No, they want fast, 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 fast. They want, you know, a, a phone on their game. They want to be able to have it so they're listening to their music, they're answering messages, pop over to this game, click, 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 go over, do whatever you want, fast, fast, fast. And that's not what tabletop is. I'm having a hell of a time trying to teach my kids, like I've taught them, but they have zero interest in wanting to be playing War Machine because when you're trying to sell this, like, yeah, you got to build these, you got to paint these, you got to make your list. And then once you're done that, then we're looking to like an hour or two we're actually playing the game. And they don't want that. They don't want that at all. You also see that with things like board games. Board games are a classic thing that you see for, for how long, but when people want to play it now, do you want to be able to, to have to have, like, I'm going to have all my shelf space here needed for all my board games. i got to take the time to set it up. I need to bring people in, hope nobody drops. 
Well, no, I just now play my board games online. I go into the lobby. It tells me when there's people to play. It's all set up for me with all the rules and everything set up to go. And click, 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 let's go and play this game. Oh, you know, if it's one of these ones where I can just like save and come back later, well, that's great. You know, it's just on my phone. I'll take off. I can come back later. And you can't do that with War Machine, which is why it's not as big of a thing going forward. And I think it's something we have to keep in mind that we, as as we start getting more and more, like there's more salt getting my hair all the time, as us old timers might want to hold on to the ways that we used to play this, we have to realize that that might not be the market anymore. I mean, even if we just look at the actual game themselves and like for the tabletop miniatures, there's always so much more competition. So many things are there trying to fight for it. In the, the last interview that they did there with, oh, now I can't remember his name, Oh, geez, Matt Wilson, uh, he was admitting that, you know, like, there's always more games uh, coming out. There's now just you have to spread out the players to all the, the people who are playing those games. Well, that means there's less and less people playing and more and more competition. So where do you have to move to? If, if the field of the people that are old like us wanting to build and play things, if that's going to get tougher and tougher, well, where can we move to? Well, I really think we have to go to digital. Now, how is this going to be possible? Well, the real problem is that making a game like this can take a lot of money. I mean, the, the folks there, like Lars, that put together War Table, that's amazing. That's a, a passion project, but it's also fairly simple when you think about it, right? You just need a program that controls these circles, and you need to have a dice thing there, an ability to move models and delete models and put on a token or something like that, that's fairly easy. If we're talking about a program where it now has to know all these rules in the background, there's animations, all these controls, blah, blah, that's complicated and complicated takes money. And when I'm talking about money, well, how is Privateer Press going to get money? Well, there's lots of different ways you could actually build it. The program itself could cost money as you go to buy. Instead of buying a model, you just buy your, your actual options in the game. We could do something like that. Uh, something more classic like that, where if I want to be buying this whole faction, I can do that. Just like with War Table, right? You, you get the app, then you buy the different decks. You could do something like that. But... Something else we might also want to be thinking about is something like what, again, Magic Arena did. What Magic Arena did is, oh, you want Magic Arena? It's free. Here you go. Take it. You want to play games? Go ahead. Here you go. Oh, you want to play in these tournaments? Oh, well, you're going to have to gather up these gems and little the points and stuff like that. Oh, you want to have these different skins and things? Or you want to crack more packs? Yeah, that's going to take these gems. You can either get those slowly just by getting those games in, or you can be paying real money to get those. So, again, the whole idea of like oh, cracking packs and different skins and stuff like that, sleeves, stuff like that, might not really work the same for War Machine. It could. You could say like for alternate models. It's like an alternate... 3D render that you'd have in the game. You could do something like that, but again, it could be something more too, or like, hey, you want to get in and you want to play this War Machine game? It's free. Here you go. Here's the app. Oh, you want to be part of, be able to go and like have a membership to go online and play with, you know, get that ability to be like, I'm going to go in the lobby and play anyone? All right, well, there could be a monthly fee. Oh, you want to be unlocking this specifically, this new one, and not get it, you know, whenever? A little extra bits here. Like, there's ways you can make it work. Again, there's not like there's a one perfect way to make this, but the big thing I want to get across is that this could be very lucrative for Privateer Press. Especially once you think that once you get past that initial hump where you've gone and done all this programming, well, now you no longer have to be building models. You know, the people that are doing 3D renders for you, that's great. But we're just not going to turn to models anymore. In fact, it might be easier for them because those people like Doug that are making these beautiful pieces of art for their, their models no longer need to think that this is something that has to exist in the physical realm. How are we going to actually sculpt this? How is it going to go together? What are going to be the easy breaking points? Well, no, this thing's going to be living online, and so it can be whatever you want it to be. And then they just keep on going from there. Oh, there's you want to be doing a CID update, a dynamic update? 
right? That's easy. It's a patch. It's out there, right? Like, you can just be doing this, and they don't have to even give up on the other side. Just like Magic the Gathering, they can be doing the tabletop version, and you can be doing the online version as well. Imagine if when you buy a box, there's a code inside to be playing that model online. Because you know what? That's what Magic the Gathering does. And I really feel like they've captured that spirit and it's going super well for them and I just keep on worrying as I'm looking that you know look at even right now there's so many people that are going to be leaving the game because they just can't play there's the dis distribution issues that privateer press has there's the pandemic issues you can't even go out and play and so what are people forced to do well maybe you're going out and doing war table but at the same time you might be doing some other online game or maybe you're getting out of gaming completely and you're going out there and doing exercise stuff like me and going on hikes and things like that right so whatever you're they're going to do privateer press needs to realize that this is the future and that they need to build this game for future players and future generations if they have any hope for this game to be going more than five years type thing so anyway that's what i think i really strongly think that you know, Privateer Press, if they could get the, the capital or the support from the community and be like, hey, you work on this and then you'll have, you know, free access for life, whatever it takes, this is what they really need to strive in the current environment that we're going into, both in an environment of just companies coming out from all over the place making competing games but also just a new type of generation that wants to be playing things on their phone and a world where we have to worry about more about pandemics and local game stores closing so there you have it thanks for listening to this one i know it's a little bit more in depth and a little bit more opinionated so of course i'm sure you have your opinions feel free to put them down below we can continue this conversation but otherwise i'll catch you later bye